For this showcase, I will be showing the Hornby Flying Scotsman 50th Anniversary USA Tour and the Flying Scotsman 100th Anniversary Coach. I got the locomotive a few years ago off of Train World and the coach I got earlier this year off eBay. Since the locomotive is played in gold, there will be no running session for, for this video as I do not want to scratch the gold work. The Flying Scotsman has quite a bit of history and this model represents the USA Tour back in 1969. Now this is normally where I would give a brief history section, but I would recommend the Unlucky Tugs video on the tour. I will link the video in the description. The coach on the other hand is an early British four-wheel coach, and it is just a fantasy scheme. The packaging for the Scotsman starts with a white cover. The front of the cover has the Flying Scotsman nameplate, the 50 years since the tour, and the name of the tour. In the bottom left, we have the Hornby logo, and on the bottom right, we have an 18 karat gold plated logo. On the back of the cover, we have the Flying Scotsman nameplate and other product info. Once you slide the cover off, you will be greeted by a green box. The front of the box has the Flying Scotsman Hornby logo and other printing in gold. This is the only lettering on the box. To open the box, you just need to lift the lid from the bottom and gently move it up. Inside the box, you will be greeted with a thin layer of paper followed by the Certificate of Authenticity with the number out of a thousand. In my case, I have 880 out of a thousand. There is also a slip with a warning about the gold plating when running the loco. Underneath the box lid, we have a large section giving a brief overview of the USA Tour. The locomotive, extra tender, and display track are all snug inside a firm foam piece. The locomotive is packed in the standard clear plastic case, while the extra tender is in a slot wrapped in thin plastic. The two display tracks are placed in paper wrapping. To get the locomotive out, you just need to grab the case from these two ends and gently pull it out. From there, just slide the locomotive out the plastic shell, and then pop the tab off in the back, and open the lid. Underneath the loco, we have the model manual, and inside the case, we have the cylinder cocks and a flamed wheel. The tender and display track can be pulled out with the inserts here, and they just slide out. There is also an etched metal anniversary plate to put on the display, which I have already done. The coach is packed in a green box with a black bottom and gold stripe. On the front of the box, we have a large window to see the coach. Also on the front, we have the Flying Scotsman nameplate on the top, and on the bottom, we have the Hornby logo on the right, and on the left, we have the Flying Scotsman 100 Years emblem. The back of the box just has some general product info. The top of the box from left to right has an illustration of the Scotsman, the Hornby logo, and the 100 Years emblem. The bottom of the box is just black. On the left side of the box, we have the same prints as the top, and on the right side, we have the item information. To get the coach out, just simply open one of the tabs on each side. Slide the coach out, then just pop the tab off here, and you can access the coach. Also included are two step boards that you can install onto the coach yourself. The locomotive is painted in the LNER apple green livery like she was on the tour. The wheels are painted green with a white lining on the outside, and the axles are painted black with a white outline. The outer metal parts of the wheels are plated in gold. The side rods, what I believe is the reverser rod, and the part holding the speedometer are plated in gold. The front bogey is black and the trailing truck is black with red lining. The trailing wheel is also just painted black with gold plating. The piston is painted black with a green rectangle with a white border in the center. The running board is black with red lining across the sides. The splashers above the wheels are painted black, and on the sides, we have green with white lining. The Flying Scotsman nameplate is red with gold lining and lettering. Moving up to the boiler, the smoke box is painted black, while the main boiler is painted green. Running across the boiler is the white and black banding. The handrails are plated in gold, and on the firebox, we have more white lining. At the front of the locomotive, the smoke box is painted black, with the smoke door handle painted in silver. Next to the smoke box, we have the copper pieces and handles plated in gold. The pilot is painted red with a white outline, and in the center, we have the loco number. The coupler is also painted black, and the buffers are plated in gold. The cab is painted green with white lining across the cab and windows, and in the center, we have the LNER emblem. The front window has some additional red lining, and the roof is painted black. The windows in the front of the cab also have white lining, and the handrails are plated in gold. On the inside of the cab, we have a painted back head, and the plate between the tender and cab is plated in gold. The tenders are painted green with white and black lining. In the center of the first tender, we have the LNER, and on the second tender, 
we have 4472. The underframes are painted black with red lining and the wheels are black with gold plating. The front end of the first tender is black with silver handles while the back is painted green with a black diaphragm. On the second tender, the front and back end are painted green with black diaphragms. The buffer area is painted red with white lining while the buffers are painted black with gold plated ends and the metal parts of the coupler are also gold plated. The handrails on each tender is also plated in gold. As for details, the locomotive is made of plastic with a die cast chassis with separately applied parts. Starting at the bottom, we have the speedometer, and on the left side of the loco, I believe we have the reversing rod. Underneath the wheels, we have separately applied brake work. Moving up to the body on the boiler, we have a separately applied handrail, and on the top of the boiler, we have a separately applied steam dome, metal safety valves, and a plastic whistle. It also is important to point out that the seam line on the top of the boiler is noticeable. In the front of the loco, we have the headlight, though non-operable, a US whistle, and a non-swiveling bell. The smoke box door has a separately applied handrail and handle. The end of the running board has separately applied lamp brackets and two railings. The buffer beam has two sprung buffers with a dummy knuckle coupler, and the pilot is nicely built. Moving to the cab, the cab has separately applied handrails and glazed windows. The roof of the cab has molded rivet detail and two movable vents. On the inside of the cab, we have a molded back head with some separately applied controls, and we also have two seats and two cab doors. As for the tenders, on the first tender, we have separately applied metal handrails around the body. On the roof, we have a coal load and a water hatch. Beneath the tender, we have separately applied brake work and steps on each end. The front of the tender has molded detail with separately applied levers. The back of the tender has the diaphragms, separately applied steps, and separately applied lamp brackets. There is also a window for the corridor. The buffer beam has sprung buffers and a small hook. The second tender is very similar to the first tender with some minor differences. Since the second tender was a water tender, the roof is mostly flat with some rivet detail. In the back of the roof, we have the water hatch. Like the first tender, the underframe has separately applied brakework and steps on each end. The front and back of the tender has diaphragms and on the back of the tender has molded steps and lamp brackets and there is no window for the corridor. The buffer beam on the front has molded buffers and the back features sprung buffers, a dummy knuckle coupler, and a brake pipe. The display piece is split into two parts and can be connected by sliding the pins on one end into the holes on the other. They are made of wood with a brown finish and the bottom is covered in a felt layer. On the top of the display, we have standard track plated in gold. Up next, we have the coach. The coach is given the LNR teak wood with varnish, giving the coach the woodish look. There is also a yellow lining around many parts of the body, and printed on each end, we have the Flying Scotsman 100 Years Emblem in gold. In the center of the area, we have the year 1923 and 2023 printed in yellow, and in the middle, we have the Flying Scotsman nameplate printed. The roof of the coach is white, while the frame below the body is painted brown. The step boards are a brownish green, and the underbody is black, with the wheels being brown. The coach, for the most part, is entirely made of plastic. As for details, on the body, we have separately applied door handles. On one end of the body, we have molded lamp brackets, while the other end has molded steps, lamp brackets, and a separately applied handrail. On the roof, we have a handrail, and these nodes are separately applied. Unfortunately, some of them were not placed fully on. The buffer beams have metal buffer ends, a separately applied brake pipe, and a hook. The frame underneath the body has molded rivet detail. Underneath, we have some separately applied brake work, as well as two step boards that I installed. The wheels are made of metal and are nicely etched. Around the wheels are the brake shoes, and the suspension is also nicely molded. Since I don't have much in the way of British locomotives, I probably won't be riding this coach anytime soon, but nevertheless, it's nice novelty to have. And those were the Flying Scotsman Anniversary Models. While I may never run them, these models, I still find them quite nice to look at and display. A big thank you again for 50 subscribers, and I'll see you all in the next video.